So the Bible has given to us for us to know him. So we say it in Ephesians 1.17, he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Then Colossians says that we may be filled with the knowledge, with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. First John 5.20 says, We know that the Son of God is come and he has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and that we are in him that is true. Who is, even, who, even him who is eternal life and the true God. So the reason why, hear me, the reason why the Holy Spirit was given to us is so that we may know Jesus. I, I cannot overemphasize this because in, in this country and beyond, we are having different kinds of messages that are not Christ. You know, you can teach many things from the Bible and still not preach Christ. It's, it's possible. To preach Christ, first you must know who he is. To know who he is, you have to know you have to study the New Testament. You can't know Jesus from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So if you want to know who Jesus is, you have to study, all right, the New Testament and then look at the Old Testament prophecies and begin by using the light of the New Testament to decode what that meant. Numbers 21. Let's read from verse number one. Numbers 21 from verse number one. One to go. He fought against and took some of them as. Aha. Uh -huh. Continue. If you will indeed, then I will utterly destroy their cities. Verse 3. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Continue. Pay attention, pay attention verse number four. He says, the latter part of that verse, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the journey, the way. The people of God were discouraged because of the way. What happened? This is what happens all over the world. Even in churches today, if someone is discouraged, the first person they want to blame is pastor. First, next verse. Verse number what? And the people speak against God. The people started murmuring against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loaded this light bread. So their discouragement largely is because of food. Clothes. What is your greatest discouragement? Is it not clothes? Food. House. Car. No money. Discouraged. So I don't want this Christianity. The reason they were discouraged and they began complaining to God is because they didn't have bread. So we can say they are stomach. Look at your neighbor and tell him, make sure that your stomach does not cause you to talk against God. <laughs> and the Lord sent. That means the Lord allowed fiery serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of Israel died. It shows you, if you read the Bible in the first Corinthians, first Corinthians, 
chapter 10, the Bible talks of this as the destroyer. It says they complained and they were destroyed by the destroyer. But if you read numbers, you can't see the destroyer. You only see snake, serpent. And serpent is a picture of the devil. Serpent is the destroyer. But without the New Testament, we wouldn't have known that the serpent actually, it was the destroyer, it was Satan. That means the only way we would have interpreted this verse rightly is by knowing who the serpent is. And you cannot know who the serpent is from the old covenant. At least not in detail. Your only way you'll know who the serpent is, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, that old serpent, the devil. Aha. So now that I know he's the devil, and I go back to Numbers and I begin to read, I understand this is Satan attacking God's people because of complaining and murmuring. Brothers and sisters, complaining and murmuring against your leaders is dangerous. Complaining and murmuring against God is dangerous. Because of your own discouragement. Not God's doing. Verse 7. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. Oh, so they knew. <laughs> we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Hear me, hear me and hear me very well. I have told you in this church many times. Hey, don't talk bad about men of God, irrespective of what they have done, or any brother or sister. Why? Why? Because there is a problem. The problem is God said don't. So if you do, you are now opening yourself for something. The, who told them that? He, listen, they were talking in their homes. <laughs> Moses was somewhere else, minding his own business. He said, Moses, 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 we are dying. What did you do? We have talked against you. And we've talked against God. So they knew. You see, we need to have a heart of Jesus. What is Jesus like? How is he like? How does he handle things? Here's a question. Have you ever seen Jesus criticizing people in all his preaching from Matthew to John? No. No. Did you ever see Jesus preaching about sinners and talking badly about sinners in his preaching? No. The only people Jesus rebuked are religious leaders who know the truth but have chosen to, to have their own commandments and follow their own commandments and teach their own commandments. Those are the people he talked against. But for sinners, the Bible says he was a friend of sinners. Let's continue. So therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8, let's read one to go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass. Oh, This is powerful. This is so powerful that I, 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 now this, you know, this shakes, it shakes everything that people believe. Hear me. They were in trouble. Satan was in their camp. Snakes were biting them. They were dying. They came to Moses and said, Moses, we have sinned. Moses prayed and God said, Moses, what do you do? Make a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looks upon it, the pole, or the serpent on the pole, shall live. Question, where is work there? The work for believers to stay delivered is looking at the cross. And what Jesus did on the cross. That is where deliverance is. But we are busy preaching other things. Busy telling people steps on how they can be free. And the more we do that we confuse them. It's so simple. The message is Christ. What he did on the cross. He said hey just look. Just 
what is so hard in looking? That means perceive. That means have revelation. Look. We have been told so many things that are not working. The Bible calls the gospel the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. It is so simple. But we have, and I can say largely as ministers, we have confused God's people by heavy, big theological terms. Yet the thing is very simple. Just look at Jesus. Paul said, I pray for you. So the eyes of your understanding may be open. That you may know him. That you may know Christ. Paul said. He said, I, my desire is to know nothing but Christ. And my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and power. The message is Christ. There is no any other message. There is no other message. If you teach giving, teach it from the perspective of Christ. If you teach spiritual warfare, teach it from the perspective of what Jesus has done. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every, oh God, everyone that looks. Ah, the solution was in the, and that is a significant, hear me, hear me, hear me. What is a serpent? The serpent metaphorically means, simply stands for Satan. Right? Okay. The one who's beaten represents a sinner. Hey, come on. Okay. Look at how God told Moses. says, Moses, make Let's read it again. Make a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. It shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looks upon it, shall live. Ah. <laughs> and Moses, verse 9, made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. It came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Ah. He has been beaten by a snake. There is, a, there, is, there is another snake of brass that is on the brass in the Bible signifies judgment. So the snake on the pole has been judged. That means judgment has been pronounced on the snake. Over the snake. And the pole signifies Christ. That is, your sin and my sin was judged on the cross 2,000 years ago. Ah. You understand this now? So that was a type of Christ, a shadow of the real thing. It wasn't the real thing, but it produced results. If these people looking at a brazen serpent were made whole and they lived, tell me what happens if a man looks at Christ. Tell me what, what happens to a man's business if he looks at Christ. Look at John 8, 28. Read. Then say Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, Uh-huh. John 12, 32 says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men. All men. Okay. People preach this a lot. Wait until you see the next verse. Next verse. Why did he say that? He said that to signify his death. It's that simple. There is no deep revelation. It's that simple. Okay, so when Moses took a serpent, a brass serpent, and put it on a pole, and raised a cross on a pole, what he was saying is, sin, prophetically, will be judged. And whoever looks on the finished works of Jesus Christ, and what the cross has accomplished, will live, have life. 
reign in life. Enjoy life. Rule over devils. By just looking. Imagine you've been beaten by a snake. Poison is in your system. You look at that thing and the poison is neutralized in you. No prayer. No fasting. Revelation understanding sets men free. You shall know the truth. And the truth you know shall make you free. And that's why I keep telling you, you have to be careful who you listen to. John chapter 3. Maybe 12. If I have told you earthly things, this is Jesus talking, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? <laughs> now, remember, he was talking to the bishop of the day. He said, if I have told you of earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Then he went on, and no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, or from heaven, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life so that was a picture what is the gospel first corinthians 1 17 what is the gospel what is it you know people saying we are preaching the gospel just because you're preaching and you have a mic doesn't mean you're preaching the gospel what is the gospel 1 Corinthians 1.17 says, what does he say? For Christ, this is Paul, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach what? So the man, number one, was sent by Christ. And he was given a message by Christ. He said to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So he, he gives us a... He gives us not openly though, but he tells us what the gospel is. He says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross. Not lest the, not lest the gospel, but lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So the gospel has everything to do with the, with, the, with the cross. And what happened on the cross? That's what he said, verse 18. Look at verse 18. For the preaching... Of the cross. I thought he said preaching the gospel. You know when you read the Bible you have to be careful. Go back to verse 17. Go back to verse 17. Let's read. For the preaching. For Christ sent me. Sent me not to baptize. But to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So the gospel is connected to the cross. Okay verse 18. Then it says, verse 18, for the preaching of the gospel. No, for the preaching of the cross. So it's the same thing. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Even, pa even pastors, ministers don't agree. For us who preach something like this, we are called shallow. <laughs> and because we don't use heavy words, we are called shallow. Brother, you can't be shallow. Do you know the amount of studying goes into this for you to be able to single out every difference? Distinguish the difference. There's a, a, a lot of study. A lot of study. Hear me. You can study many books. And the Bible says in the study of many books, you, you become tired for nothing. It says the conclusion of the matter is this. Study the Bible. But we also know, and we are clever, based on the scriptures, that what we ought to know is Christ. Who he is. Alright? So what is the gospel? It's the preaching of the cross. It is preaching of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. Why he came. Why he became sin. You see, the serpent, the brass serpent, is a significant it signifies the real serpent that was biting the children of Israel, right? So the gospel is the good news of what happened on the cross of Calvary and what it means for us. The believer is not a product of the death of Jesus, but rather the resurrection <laughs> of Jesus. Look at Romans chapter 10 verse 9. How do you get saved? If you shall confess, what? With your mouth, the Lord Jesus... And shall believe in your heart 
that God has raised him from the dead. So a Christian is a product of the resurrection, not the death. A Christian is a product of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the most powerful thing that ever happened is Jesus coming out of the grave. If he never came out of the grave, his death would have been useless. But the fact that he came out, oh, he conquered death, he conquered the devil, he gave us victory and gave us a name. Brothers and sisters, now you and me, we are the sons of God and we have a name, brothers. Hallelujah. We have a name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus. Thank God for the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. You shall be saved. So you got saved because Jesus died and rose again. If he died and never rose, no Christianity. Acts 20, 32. All the way to 35. Let's read from the Amplified. And now, brethren, I commit you to God. Tell your neighbor, read, read properly because there's something very powerful here. I commit you to God. I deposit in you his charge and trusting you to his protection and care. Uh -huh. And I commend you to pay attention to the word of his grace in brackets. To the commands and counsels and promises of his unmerited favor. There is no favor in the old covenant. Not as we know it in the new covenant. Ah. So what builds men up? It's the word of his grace. The preaching of the good news is what builds men up. The preaching of the gospel. What is the gospel? What happened in his death, burial, and resurrection? What Christ is to us. What he's doing in us. And what he's doing through us. That is the gospel. He says, to the commands and counsels and promises of his unmerited favor, it is, it is able to build you up and to give you your rightful among all God set apart ones. What is going to give you your rightful place among the ones who are sanctified? The word of his grace. Let's move, let's just move down. Thank God for Amplified. I coveted no man's silver or gold or costly garments. Next verse. You yourselves know personally that those hands ministered to my own needs and those of the persons who are with me. In everything I have pointed out to you by example. This is Paul. <laughs> by working diligently in this manner, we ought to assist the weak, being mindful of the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed, makes one happier and more to be envied, to give than to receive. Okay. Did Jesus say it's more blessed to give than to receive? So Jesus is generous. Ephesians 4.28, New Living Translation. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously. The reason you're working, this is the revelation of giving to the needy. The reason you're working is so that you can have and share with those that don't have. First Timothy 6, 17 to 19. Read. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money. Who are we supposed to trust in? Jesus. Who is more than money? Jesus. Which is so unreliable? Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Say amen. amen. It's good to enjoy. Next verse. Tell them to use their money to do good. They shall be rich in good works and generous to those in need. Now, did you notice he said, command them. That means God is not saying, please. He's saying, you must be generous and take care of the needy. You must Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need. Always being ready to share with. Next verse. 
By doing this, they will be storing up their treasures as good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. There's a future. He's telling us, if you begin to take care of the needy, you are sowing into your future. It's either you go for money and lose God and lose the benefits or go for God and have everything. It's up to you. Did you ever read Psalm 103? It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases? Luke 18, 18 to 22. We thank God for Jesus. You see, if you know him, you will know his heart. You will know his heart. Oh, you'll be crying before men and people will want, well, they, will, they will not understand. Why is this? Because, oh, when you close your eyes and imagine those wonderful things he has done for you and how great he is, you just cry tears of joy. Anyway, because of time, why do you call me good? Jesus asked him, only God is truly good. Next verse. But to answer your question, you know the commandments, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, honor your father and mother. And the man said, the man replied, I've carefully obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Okay. When Jesus had his answer, he said, there is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and, 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 this is where I was bringing you. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Now, there are many things we can learn from here. However, here's the thing. Sell everything you have, give to the poor, and he says, you will have a treasure in heaven. So giving to the poor is actually lending to God to keep it for you. Hi. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you very, very much for watching today's broadcast. And I sincerely hope you have been blessed, inspired, and even challenged by today's broadcast. I also want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all my friends and partners for your financial support. You have made it possible for us to air this broadcast and reach many people. Thank you from my heart. Until next time, same place, same time, I am Pastor Moffat, and Jesus is Lord.